Tokyo Disneyland is often referred to as a sort of greatest hits of classic Disney rides, but recently they've also added a bunch of incredible rides that are totally unique to the park. If you're planning a visit and want to know what to ride and what to skip, or if you simply want to learn more about this unique Disney park, I invite you to join me as we rank all 30 rides at Tokyo Disneyland. I've included a few attractions that aren't really rides, as you know, you don't move or anything, but it didn't really feel right not to include them. This first one is one of those, and it's the only thing in this entire video that I never do at Tokyo Disneyland. I'm talking about Stitch Encounter. A friend of mine was so disappointed when they visited because they expected to see the really cool animatronic from Stitch's Great Escape in Florida, but they found themselves sat in a room looking at a TV for 15 minutes. Keep that animatronic in mind, as we'll be talking about it more a little bit later. If you're familiar with the Turtle Talk attractions at other parks, it's basically the same thing. You sit in front of a screen, some people ask questions, and Stitch answers them. I'm not going to bring up the language barrier too much in this video, because, you know, Tokyo Disneyland is a Japanese theme park in Japan, so you should expect things to be in Japanese. But unless you have a child in your group who speaks fluent Japanese and loves Stitch, I'd give this one a miss. Next up is a classic ride that's plenty of fun, but just doesn't really hold a candle to most of the other ones in the park, despite its delightfully low-tech interactive element. Alice's Tea Party, yep, yeah, it's not the Mad Hatter's Tea Party here, is your standard teacups ride. Turn the thing and spin around. It is enhanced by the cast members clapping along and the Dormouse poking his head up in the middle, but the best thing about this ride in my opinion is that on rare occasions you can see characters riding it, which is really cool. Another classic flat ride with some old school interactivity, which is totally fine for what it is, Dumbo the Flying Elephant feels like more of a photo opportunity than anything else, and you can actually take a photo in the vehicle without even going on the ride. You know, if you really want to ride Dumbo, you're gonna ride Dumbo, and if you don't, then you won't. What else can I say? And finishing off our trifecta of Fantasyland flat rides is the Castle Carousel. It lacks the double tier and unique flair of the Caravan Carousel at Tokyo Disney Sea next door, but, you know, the Castle Carousel is just pure nostalgia. You couldn't imagine the park without it, but you don't really feel like you have to ride it. Speaking of things you're glad are in the park, but you really don't need to ride, the Beaver Brothers Explorer canoes add some great kinetic energy to the rivers of America, and they do offer some unique low views of Western Land, Critter Country, and Tom Sawyer Island. But, especially if you're visiting in Japan's notoriously hot and humid summer, you probably don't want to be spending your day rowing a canoe unless you intend to jump out and take a swim, which uh, is against the park rules and please do not do that. Similarly, this next one also offers some interesting views, both on ride and off, but it edges out the canoes as it doesn't require any physical exercise. The omnibus is a brief but enjoyable circle around the hub, which rarely has a queue. It's a great little sit down ride if you want to rest your feet while getting some nice views. Our first roller coaster of the list, this next one is a really great little family coaster for those who are working their way up to the bigger ones. The Gadget Go Coaster enhances its short layout with some fun props and gags while you're whizzing around. It's the same coaster as the Barnstormer at Magic Kingdom and the Gadget Go Coaster at Disneyland in California, in case you're wondering. If you want some family thrills or you want to get on all of the roller coasters in the park, then yeah, give this one a ride. This final flat ride of the list edges out the others with its fun whipping motion, playful lighting, and upbeat soundtrack. Baymax's Happy Ride is a delightful little ride which will have you dancing your way through the queue before whipping side to side behind your personal healthcare companion. Unfortunately, as the ride is amongst the newest in the park, it does get very long queues, but it's worth just stopping by, especially after dark, to hear the music, see the lights, and watch everybody dancing along. Now I know I said I wouldn't mention the language barrier too much, but whilst you do get used to hearing Disney songs in Japanese around the resort, it's a little bit harder to swallow when you're looking at an English movie. Mickey's Philhar Magic will be familiar to many of you, and if it is, there's really no need to watch it while you're in Tokyo. If you haven't seen it, are curious about hearing the songs in Japanese, or simply want to rest your legs and enjoy the smell of apple pie, then you'll enjoy this playful romp through classic Disney songs. This is probably the part of the video where I start upsetting people, but I'm not an enormous fan of Jungle Cruise, and Tokyo's version is fine in the day, and it's very pretty at night actually, both with a beautiful projection map finale, but unless it has a short queue in the evening, I usually skip it myself. 
The ride does have some unique scenes, including some that have been removed from the American parks a while ago, which I talked about in another video, so if you really want to see that kind of stuff, then give it a ride, it's fun. Before we get into our top 20, please hit the subscribe button if you're enjoying this video so that you don't miss future Tokyo Disney Resort videos. Remember earlier when I said that we'd come back to the Stitch animatronic that used to be at the Magic Kingdom? Well, if you remember another thing that used to be in the Magic Kingdom was the Enchanted Tiki Room under new management, where they ruined this classic attraction by adding Zazu and Iago. Well, Tokyo changed their Tiki Room too, but they added a Stitch animatronic playing a ukulele. And whilst I would rather have the classic Tiki Room, the Stitch animatronic is really cool, and it makes for a cute little show, which has a seated waiting area for the 5 to 10 minutes max that you'll be waiting anyway, so it's well worth popping in if your feet are tired and you're nearby. It seems a little bit unfair to place this one so low, as it really it's a means of transportation to a really cool area. Whilst the rafts to Tom Sawyer Island themselves are nothing noteworthy, the island is a wonderful place for young and not so young visitors, which really captures that magic of exploration that makes Disney parks so special. This is another one that's in a lot of Disney parks around the world, so if you've done it before, you can probably skip it here because it's basically exactly the same. Although the queue is a tiny bit longer and has some cool stuff. Anyway, for those who don't know, Star Tours is a Star Wars ride. If you love Star Wars and you like 3D motion simulators, then you'll love this, so go ahead, do it. Also, it's one of the rides that gets the shortest queues at Tokyo Disneyland, so it's quite a good way to just kill 10 or 15 minutes by going on a really cool ride. A staple of every Disney castle park, except for Shanghai, is the train circling the entire park and taking you from one land to another. Whilst Tokyo does have the Western River Railroad, it's a little bit different in that it only has one station and only circles one half of the park. It seems to get longer queues than the other ones too, but it does offer some gorgeous views of the park, as well as the primeval world diorama that you can also see in California. This is just another one of those great rides to sit down, relax, and really take in the park. One thing that you won't find in California is the Country Bear Jamboree. This Disney classic is always a joy to see, even in another language. Tokyo Disney Resort's excellent maintenance means that the bears look brand new, and the cast members cheerfully clapping along to the songs always get a reaction from the audience. I just really love this show. Now that we're further into the list, we'll start checking off the many new and nostalgic dark rides in the park. It was really difficult to choose between these, but I've put Pinocchio's Daring Journey at the bottom of them. It's incredibly similar to the versions found in California and Paris, a true book report ride that takes you through the scenes of the classic movie. And don't get me wrong, it's great, and it always has a short queue, so I do recommend riding it, but I just think the other ones have a little bit more special to them. Just across from Pinocchio, you'll see the iconic facade for It's a Small World. Tokyo Disneyland updated their version of the ride in 2016 to feature characters from Disney movies, which was controversial, but it turns the ride into a sort of spot the character game, which is really fun, whilst also maintaining all of the charm and spirit that made the original such a cultural sensation. And if spotting things is what you want from the ride, then you can't go wrong with Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blasters. Identical to the ones found in Paris and California, and very similar to the others, the spinning and shooting will be familiar to many, but it's always a fun experience battling for the highest score and getting annoyed with the person sitting next to you every time they turn the vehicle. I want it to look this way! Okay, I love Tokyo's Snow White. It's pretty short and it's very dark and I just love it. It's definitely the scariest of the remaining Snow White rides around the world, because Tokyo's version never altered theirs in response to complaints of it being too scary, which I've talked about in another video, so check that out if you're interested. As a result, the ride features the Wicked Queen a lot, tons of skeletons and spooky trees and really dark scenes with loud noises, and the ride ends not with a happily ever after, but with the guests being crushed by a boulder. Yay! Now topping off the classic Fantasyland dark rides, it's hard to deny that Peter Pan's flight just captures that nostalgic, magical experience that you want from a Disney ride perfectly. Whether it's flying over London or seeing Neverland from above, the ride is just always a joy. Tokyo's version is a little bit short, but most of the time the queue is too, which will be a big surprise to anyone who's used to the Magic Kingdoms having like an hour long queue. So I really think it's well worth riding whether you've done it elsewhere or not. Okay, we're about to get into the top 10, but before we do, if you've been enjoying these little pixel art versions of the ride vehicles, you can get them on some merch in my store. Just scan the QR code on screen or check the link in the description. 
Okay, so kicking off the top 10. Whilst Peter Pan's Flight was our last traditional Fantasyland dark ride on the list, there are plenty of other dark rides in the park, and I have a real soft spot for Roger Rabbit's cartoon spin in Toontown. The queue is almost as fun as the ride, and it continues the wacky, playful energy of Toontown perfectly. Not to mention the great teacup-style spinning vehicles, adding an extra layer of chaos. Whether you're a fan of the 80s film or not, you should really check this ride out because it's just so fun. This next ride is probably going to date this video a bit, as it's not going to be around for much longer. At least not in its current form, so if you're visiting before it closes in 2024, make sure you ride Space Mountain. The track layout is the same as California's and Hong Kong's, but it doesn't have an onboard soundtrack like those do. At first this feels like a big downgrade, like something's missing, but along with the sound design and lighting, it creates a real eeriness that gives the ride a very different feel from the other ones, and kind of captures the spirit of infinite space a lot better than the others do. Who knows what the new version will be like in 2027, but for now, make the most of this unique version of the classic Disney coaster. If you've watched my ranking video of all 21 Disney Sea rides, you'll know that I do have a soft spot for transport attraction. I also love a walkthrough experience, and this ride is both of them in one. The Mark Twain Riverboat looks amazing off-ride, and then when you board, you can explore this entire mock riverboat, before setting sail on a relaxing yet majestic voyage through the rivers of America. If any ride in the park truly transports you a million miles from the city of Tokyo, then it's this one. There are some incredible views and even some fun set pieces to see on the 10 minute journey, so just take a deep breath and relax in this beautiful part of the park. One of the many rides you'll get an excellent view of from the Mark Twain is Big Thunder Mountain. Very similar to the version at the Magic Kingdom, Tokyo's does have a bit more excitement after the third climb hill, which keeps up the pace of the ride a lot better. There's just nothing quite like zooming through these highly detailed environments on a runaway mine train. This is a ride that I especially enjoy at night time, when the lighting makes those views extra magical and makes the coaster feel a lot faster too. A tip for solo visitors, the ride has a secret single rider queue, which is usually empty. If you ask a cast member at the entrance, they'll be happy to help you. They do sometimes close the single rider line, especially towards the end of the day, so don't rely on it too much, but it's well worth an ask. Okay, we're finally getting to some of those unique rides that can only be found at Tokyo Disneyland. This next one is an absolute joy from start to finish, especially if you're a fan of the movie. Monsters Inc. Ride and Go Seek is an interactive dark ride where you use flashlights to find monsters hiding throughout Monstropolis. Chock full of hilarious gags, amazing animatronics, and some really cool special effects, this ride is not to be missed and fun for all ages. To be honest, I'd probably have ranked this quite a bit higher if it wasn't for the ride vehicles. The cramped legroom paired up with the sudden brakes that slam on when the ride stops sometimes can make it a little bit uncomfortable. So if you have long legs, it might be worth having a car each rather than trying to share. But once you're comfortable and ready to go, you'll love this ride. It just really makes you feel like a kid again, wanting to play hide and seek and explore all these hidden monsters everywhere. Super cool. Okay, this next one is probably gonna surprise some people as I definitely know some people would put it at number one, but personally, I just enjoy some other rides more, even though they're not as grand or impressive. So, kicking off our top five is the Enchanted Tale of Beauty and the Beast. It's absolutely spectacular. From the instant you see the Beast's castle, you know you're in for something very special. The queue builds anticipation perfectly before you get to the pre-show and you see these jaw-dropping animatronics. Once you've boarded your vehicle, you'll dance through some of the different songs in the movie. The ride is very unique in a lot of ways, but one of them is that it has a very deliberately slow pace something we're really not used to on dark rides. There's also not a ton to look at. The stuff that is there looks amazing, but it's kind of scarce. The combination of the slow pace and lack of animatronics has left some people feeling a little bit underwhelmed, but the incredible transformation scene does a lot to re-energize the ride, and by the finale, if you're anything like me, you'll be an emotional wreck. Please don't take this the wrong way, it's an absolutely incredible experience and one that you absolutely must do if you visit the park. But it is a very slow paced ride which takes some getting used to and I just want to adjust people's expectations properly. Coming in at number 4 is a ride that for a long time defined Tokyo Disneyland and paved the way for rides like Beauty and the Beast. The world's first trackless dark ride, Pooh's Honey Hunt became a cultural phenomenon when it opened here in 2000. 
It wasn't just the revolutionary ride system, it was the gorgeous animatronics and the scenes that perfectly captured the sweet and playful world of Winnie the Pooh. Contrary to the previous ride, this one is perfectly paced and you're constantly discovering something new and unexpected around every corner. One minute you're being blown through the hundred acre wood, next you're bouncing with Tigger before dancing around with mischievous heffalumps and woozles. Another ride not to be missed which is fun for the entire family. Now if you're a local to another Disney park, these next two might not seem so special, but despite being designed in the 60s, these two rides still feel like they could have been built today, especially when paired with the excellent maintenance that Tokyo Disney Resort has. Different people have their favourites amongst these two, but I'm sure you can see where I'm going with this. In third place is Pirates of the Caribbean. Whilst not quite the full length of the original in California, and not the fresher takes seen in Paris or Shanghai, Tokyo's Pirates retains everything that made the original such a classic, including some of the more problematic scenes which I talked about in another video. It's hard to say anything about this ride that hasn't been said before, but I don't feel like a visit to the park is complete without it. And I think even if you're familiar with the others, you'll still enjoy Tokyo's more nostalgic version. Also, it's mostly in English. Of course it's hard to talk about Pirates without talking about its sister ride. The Haunted Mansion has the incredible wealth of animatronics and scenes that Pirates does, but it's combined with the special effects that shaped the industry and still look impressive to this day, along with the more creative and quirky atmosphere. Tokyo's Haunted Mansion is basically what Magic Kingdoms used to be, so they still have the spider scene which is a bit dated, but they also still have the old attic and hitchhiking ghost scenes which are awesome. In the holidays, the ride even gets dressed up by Jack Skellington and the gang, giving you an extra reason to check it out. Again, I really don't have anything to say about Haunted Mansion that someone else hasn't said better. It's a classic, it's the best, go ride it. Okay, well I said it's the best, but when I was putting this list together I actually ended up surprising myself with my number one pick. It will be controversial for more reasons than one, but Tokyo has always had the best version of this ride, and now it's the only version. Of course, I'm talking about Splash Mountain. This ride was really when Tokyo Disney decided that rather than simply copying things from the American parks, they were going to exceed what the American parks were doing. The entire land is basically one giant Splash Mountain, and the ride features all the wonderful scenes, songs and animatronics you'll remember from the rides in America, with that excellent Tokyo Disney maintenance making the entire thing look brand new. Even for first time riders, you'll fall in love with the adorable critters, all building up to that amazing view at the top of the mountain and the plunge down to the bottom. Even before the others closed, I'd have said you shouldn't miss Tokyo's Splash Mountain, but now that it's the only one, I think it's doubly true. I really think that OLC putting so much money into their own unique version of Splash Mountain in Tokyo was what gave them the confidence to build the most stunningly detailed and impressive theme park in the world next door, Tokyo Disney Sea. If you'd like to see a ranking of all the rides in that park, then you'll want to watch this video next. <laughs> 